test. Good evening, everyone. We're going to call the school committee meeting to order. The date is Monday, September 17th, and our next meeting will take place on Monday, October 1st. Uh, what we'll do first is we'll um, rise and salute our flag. We'll then have a moment of silence for our veterans. We'll then have the clerk call the roll to ensure that we have a quorum sufficient to meet this evening. And then we'll get into tonight's agenda, which consists of the approval of the minutes from June, public comment, uh, the superintendent's report on what's happened the first month or the first couple weeks back. Then we'll get into uh, subcommittee reports, then a few motions and resolutions. Then our members will have a moment to um, give personal privilege, and then we'll move to adjournment. So if there's no questions, I please ask everyone to rise and salute our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence in honor of all those who have fought for our country and continue to do so today. Thank you. We'll now have the clerk call the roll. Here. Here. Okay, so we have a quorum sufficient to meet this evening. Let's now get into the agenda with the first item being the approval of minutes from the regular session of June 4th, 2018. So there's a motion by Mr. Iovino. There's a second by Mr. McCarthy. Everybody's had a chance to review the minutes. Any changes, queries, qualms? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? The ayes have it. The minutes from June 4th are adopted unanimously. The next item under minutes is the executive session minutes of June 4th, 2018. Motion by Mr. Iovino, seconded by Ms. Spatafora. Everybody's had a chance to look at those. Any changes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Anybody opposed? The ayes have it. The minutes from June 4th and executive session are adopted unanimously. Item number two is public comment. This is an opportunity for the public to address the school committee. All we ask that you do is come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and we just ask you to be considerate and keep your comments uh, to a few minutes, no longer than five. So public comment is now available. Anybody wishing to address the school committee can do so now. All right, hearing none, we're gonna close that portion of the meeting. Not sure how to take that. Um, let's get to uh, item number three, which is the superintendent's report. So here we're gonna hear from our superintendent, John O'Terry, as to the opening of school and how things are going. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and uh, I'd like to welcome the school committee back for the 2018-19 school year. Uh, we had a very busy summer and uh, we hit the ground running this fall. Um, our first item on my report tonight is a presentation of a check from Bay State, Bay State Textiles 
to the Malden Public Schools PTO. Ms. Catherine Larson, who is our representative from Bay State Textiles, is here. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with people watching, Bay State Textiles uh, sponsors those bins that are in front of or adjacent to each one of our schools. They are for uh, clothing, um, stuffed animals. I had made a comment last year, they're a great way to reduce your landfill or uh, items that would go into the blue bags here in Malden. Uh, they take such items as clothing, shoes, stuffed animals, blankets, sheets, uh, pillows, a lot of those things that you can't go into landfill and cannot be recycled in your uh, city stream. They do get recycled with Bay State and uh, made into, they're sold, that go into uh, car upholstery and whatnot. Uh, also, good items, you know, sometimes people say, I'm going to send this to one place so that they can be resold. Bay State does that. Um, they uh, wholesale and sell to uh, companies and vendors all over the world, literally. Um, so they've been a really great partner with our PTOs. And this spring they sponsored a uh, closet cleanout uh, from March to June. Uh, Malden had their boxes. They collected 33,600 pounds, um, which resulted in $675 uh, on top of our monthly rebate. So this uh, presentation is a great way to continue to spread the awareness of the program that Bay State runs. It helps our PTO and it also highlights, um, you know, initiatives in being green and, and some positive uh, publicity for the district and our school as well. Uh, so I'd like to call Catherine Larson up here with our uh, PTO reps here. Uh, Don? Okay. She has one of those literally big checks, so we're excited <laughs> about that. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Uh, again, I'm Catherine Larson. I'm the Recycling Development Coordinator with Bay State Textiles, and it's an honor and a privilege to be here tonight at the school committee meeting. Um, you know, Bay State Textiles implemented the program two, a little over two years ago. It was August 25th of 2016. And since then, the uh, boxes have generated over 230,000 pounds of textiles, generating over $11,500. So it's amazing how much is out there, you know. And um, Mr. John mentioned the, uh, the benchmark of 33,600 pounds. I just want to mention that the PT, those boxes, they hit the benchmark and went above and beyond. They collected a total of 46,342.45 pounds. So, um, you know, it's, it's amazing that, that they were able to do that. So at this time, is there a representative from um, Forestdale or the Early Learning Center? So uh, the Forestdale boxes, uh, actually, they collected, uh, it was done on a per student capita. Um, so they had collected over 6,845 pounds, and that gave them their first place, uh, generating an additional $275 for their PTO. So I'd like to uh, pass that off to you. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> our second place winners is uh, the, the BB School, and they uh, second place with an additional $225 for their PTO. Oh, you can, you can Yeah, come on. And uh, in third place is the Early Learning Center, and uh, they uh, received an additional $175. So, um, <laughs> we have somebody here to take a picture, but uh, you know, Bay State Textiles appreciates the opportunity to service the Malden community, and we thank you for, um, for all the efforts with the PTOs. Okay, if there's no objection, the school committee will be in a brief recess.
Okay, school committee is back in session and we'll turn it over to our school superintendent to continue his report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I uh, want to like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, our new administrators who are here tonight. Um, I think it would be a great opportunity for the public and our board uh, to meet them. First, uh, no stranger, she's back for round two. The chase for Dr. Chase is over in Malden one, as we know from last spring. Uh, Dr. Kelly Chase, our assistant superintendent for curriculum instruction or uh, curriculum instruction and assessment. Uh, Linden Steam Academy, uh, Mr. Timothy Ruggieri. Tim, stand up there. Uh, and his assistant principal, who's new to the district this year, is uh, Ms. Sharon Sila Coteau. Um, not present tonight because of a, a family obligation. Uh, the new principal of Boyle House at Malden High School is Ms. Stephanie Sibley. Uh, also for the first time tonight, I'd like to introduce publicly Dr. Yvonne Andara, who is our English Language Educator Director, ELE. Um, we're very excited to have uh, Dr. Andara on board. A um, few special education administrators, Ms. Liz Smith is the new SPED Program Manager at the high school. Um, Laura Michelli is the special education K-8 IOP um, manager, also of the PACE program as well. Laura was with us last year as our out-of-district coordinator, and uh, we were very happy with her, and the opportunity came for her to move up. Uh, Ms. Tanya McDonald is the out-of-district coordinator. Uh, she uh, took the place of Laura when Laura moved up. Uh, also, um, we have a new nursing director, and she is a longtime member of the Malden School community, uh, Ms. Patty Tremendozzi. So we're very really excited to have Patty on board, um, and she's been working with all of our school nurses and uh, getting us up to compliance and making sure all of our kids are healthy and safe this year. Also, Linda Kelly is our before and after school program manager. Linda was uh, with the PCSM as well. So that's our new administrative team. Um, we met in August 20th and 21st as an administrative team in a retreat that we had at the high school. And what we outlined for the year was that we were going to focus, uh, have five tenets that we wanted to make sure were upheld this year. Um, and they were safety, communication, documentation, transparency, and improving student achievement. I, we agreed that if we keep those as our focus. We were going to have an outstanding school year because of our highly skilled staff that is incredibly dedicated uh, to our students and with a student-centered philosophy, we are expecting that to be sort of the foundation of which the year will, will rest. Um, of that, the most important thing that we do here every day is safety of our students. Uh, so we've spent a lot of time uh, since we last met on some of our safety improvements and I'd like to walk uh, the community through that. First of all, if you have visited our schools recently, you'll notice that you have to come in and uh, provide an ID that gets scanned into a machine that then produces a um, stick on ID for you that identifies that you are allowed to be in the building. That's what they program called Raptor. I think last fall I had noted that it was here, it had not been implemented and we went uh, full implementation with that this year. And that's an, a way in which we keep our schools safer. The people that are there have a sticker and belong there. Um, this is not a deterrent for anybody who does not have a license or documentation. Those parents, those people will be allowed into our schools. They will be escorted just like they always would. But we, looking at this as a way to keep our schools safer uh, has been very well received by our staff. Um, it checks against a couple registries. Uh, if there's outstanding warrants, it prints out that sticker with a date and time stamp and a picture of that individual. All visitors and outside contractors are using it and are escorted in and out of the building. Um, we had a manual explaining the procedures and protocols. It's been written and distributed. We had training for our administrative assistants. Uh, Peter Dolan uh, spearheaded this as he does almost all of our safety uh, enhancements. Along those lines, we also installed many new cameras in and outside of our schools at all of our, all of our schools this year. Um, and several more have been ordered. Uh, they cover areas uh, of interest that were identified as places we needed them, places to keep our community and our schools safer, uh, and the ones that weren't able to be installed when the first time we had our uh, upgrade of installations this winter. 
the early learning center and the K-8s also added keyless entries uh, that didn't exist in some of those buildings before or in other doors that needed them. The high school has them at all their uh, main doors as well. Uh, the last couple weekends, uh, Peter Dolan has been updating and distributing the flip charts that uh, I think is an incredible plus for our district. I think we're one of the few districts that has one of these in every classroom, and it has all of our safety proceedings, procedures there. Because one thing that we know, and it's been proven in every place, and it's just a tenet of human nature, that when you are in an emergency situation, sometimes you forget and think about the steps are. So this has these steps right there to make sure that you check on this, do this, don't do that. It's all laid out for us. So, you know, in the event, and hopefully we never have to go through it in a real emergency, our staff is well prepared with this. It's a portable um, item that is in each classroom, and we're really happy about that. The particular flip chart can be found on the STARS, uh, I'm going to, starstoolkit.org if you are looking for that. It's a model that other schools often use. Um, the school safety website was designed for the NEMLIC STARS and Homeland Security, so we're following the protocol with them. Uh, many other documents that Malden has produced can be found on those websites uh, as well for resource for schools. So we're really, um, we have a, a level of comfort with this that um, I think makes us feel good. Of course, uh, we're hoping that we never have to implement many of the protocols that are in those documents. Another uh, item that we are working on, it's not fully implemented yet, but should be shortly, is Crisis Go. I think I had mentioned this to the committee last year, that it's an app that is on the phones. Uh, we're getting it out there for staff, and we'll also have it available for students and parents down the road. It's a, um, it, innate, it mobilizes on a program basis of who needs to be identified in the event of certain situations that come up. Um, school systems are installing it uh, as other school departments on their desktops as well as, I, as well as iPads and code books for all of their staff, so we're confident. With Crisis Go, we had them come out and do a presentation last winter. Um, again, this is something the district had but had not fully been implemented, so we're excited that those two uh, items have come online. All of our new educators and administrators have been trained and drilled in our school safety procedures by Peter Dolan, and we're really uh, fortunate to have him here. We, uh, in, we rolled out 207 new walkie-talkies across the district that were purchased last year, and they have all been distributed to the schools. The main office, the principal and assistant principals have communication. Um, some of them have direct communication to the Malden Police Dispatch, so again, something that will cut down any response time in the event that we have a true emergency. All of our entrances have signage that's placed to inform them that the cameras are present and that they uh, potentially or they are being recorded. Uh, we've made sure that that signage is there. Uh, we have also rolled out new phone systems in many of our schools uh, that will have enhanced communication and emergency response. These are the actual landlines that are throughout the school and also in our every classroom. The staff just has to hit a specially designed button uh, to be able to initiate a hands-free communication with the office, uh, which is important, especially if there is a situation where maybe one is doing some medical attention, uh, attending to a student or a staff member who um, is incapacitated and uh, away from where the phone is, so that's a real plus. It might not sound like much, but it is. All of our phones now can call 911 without dialing another number first. And when a classroom calls 911, the secretary, the nurse, and the administration get an alert on their phone on what classroom was called, where the 911 call originated. Uh, educators also have voicemail to help them improve communication with parents, which is a big plus and outside lines have the uh, capability of recording phone calls for safety reasons. Uh, a recording at the beginning of the phone call explains that the caller may be recorded. Um, we've been working very closely with our police and fire department on improving the fire drills, evacuations, and doing our drills at least four times a year. We'll also begin to block exits and stairwells to have our staff think about the alternative escape route. Uh, that's something that I know uh, Peter has been very involved in a regional level with school safety. Um, sometimes we get just sort of droned as to which way we go out, 
Um, but in the event of something like perhaps a gas leak or um, a chemical spillage in a certain part of the building, uh, we would need to know the alternative ways to get out of there from a particular classroom. So we will begin to implement some of those once we um, get going on our drills this year. Uh, back to school emails went out to all staff uh, and an additional email went out to administrators on the reminders about school safety and Mr. Dolan does a monthly email that goes out to remind staff of what to do in certain emergencies. Uh, he's also embedded some of those emails with videos and training um, procedures to related to school emergencies. So we want to make sure the safety is first and foremost with all of our staff. Uh, students will be reminded of the emergency procedures several times during the year by uh, their, their classroom educators. And students in grades 3 and 9 will have formal assemblies on school, school safety and threat assessment. Uh, another item that comes under the safety headline that uh, Ms. Tremendozzi has been instrumental in is the Narcan distribution to all of our school nurses as well as the athletic trainer. All the nurses and the athletic trainer have been trained to look for signs and symptoms uh, as well as administrators uh, of Narcan if it is ever needed. Uh, during the year, we'll be continuing to update our safety. A couple items that are right uh, that we'll be addressing shortly will be the go kits. Um, for potential reunification in the emergency. Also, we're looking at doing our outdoor, outside doors all have numbers. We're looking at uh, redoing those so the number is more accurate and that the number that is on there is reflectorized so it would be easily illuminated at night. Also, the floor plans uh, are being updated uh, so that our public safety people and uh, school administrators have the most recent floor plan with the most accurate information that we have. Uh, we also have threat assessment teams are trained in each uh, school building on referrals and uh, assessment tools that they have for a school psychologist and when to use them, as well as our school counseling response team. Uh, we're looking at coming up with a district one for that. Uh, moving on to our technology, our Chromebooks that uh, came in at the end of last year, uh, we purchased them for grade six at the BB, Forestdale, and Linden. Uh, through our ELT grant, Salemwood and Ferryway purchased devices for their fifth grade students. So we can say that we are a one-to-one, -one, primary one-to-one -one for grades six through 12, with uh, the Salemwood and Ferryway extending that program to grade five. At the high school, our devices are in year two of use and our students are responding positively to the durability of our new device and no work was needed at the high school for devices this summer. Uh, over the summer, our interns that are employed through the mayor's youth program worked with our instructional uh, technology director, uh, Ms. Natalia Brennan, to unpack and set up the carts for students across the district and then some of our interns worked on repairing the Chromebooks that had damaged screens and keyboards. We, they actually fixed about 50 for the entire district, which is a great savings and an incredible training uh, tool for our students that gives them really hands-on practical experience um, in the IT world. For our summer activities, we had summer programs and enrichment programs that extended throughout the school year. Uh, we had summer camps and the mayor's summer youth employment program were all going full tilt this summer. Uh, the mayor joined the Department of Public Works Director Bob Knox uh, to welcome Malden High School's incoming ninth graders as part of the Malden Adventures in Academic Program led by Ms. Craven at the uh, high school. The program was funded by a grant from the Baird Foundation and at the conclusion of that three-week MAP program, a ceremony was held honoring the commitment and time that Malden High School rising freshmen put in to acclimate to the school and prepare for the road ahead. And I think that that was a great um, tool for them, a great uh, vehicle for them to accomplish that. Uh, we also had a new educator orientation that was uh, held on August 22nd and 23rd. On the 22nd, we welcomed over 60 new educators plus new administrators to, uh, we were so big we had to hold that at Anthony's this year. I wanna thank many of the school committee members for showing up and the mayor for his opening remarks. Um, we're excited about the team that we hired this year. Uh, prior to the opening of the school, the mayor and I toured each school to ensure that everything was prepared in terms of maintenance, cleanup, and safety to welcome our students back. 
We do that in concert with um, public facilities as well as public works, and we find it a very enriching and um, informative tour. Uh, I also note, and I'm not speaking from the mayor, but he remarked on how clean many of our buildings were. He didn't think that they'd ever looked this clean in several years. So uh, I, that's hats off to our custodial staff, uh, Peter Phelps and Eric Rubin, uh, as well as Tony Mertz, who oversees our custodial program. Uh, we opened our school year Monday morning on uh, August 27th for our faculty. Um, we were, uh, the bar was set rather high with the mayor's video this year, uh, which uh, was fully interactive. I told you to leave that part out. <laughs> <laughs> it employed uh, real life, not just his video, but we were welcomed by our choral arts program. It was spectacular. I think that, you know, each year he sets the bar higher. Uh, it, it was a terrific way to uh, welcome our students and uh, our staff by our students, rather, uh, with their incredible rendition of We Are the World, customized from Malden. Uh, I couldn't think of a better backdrop for that. And then we layered it with having Dr. Darnisa Amanti, who is the director of the Disruptive Equity Education Project, who gave a very thoughtful and provocative presentation on race equity and working towards eliminating systemic racism and oppression. I think that her talk really got a lot of our people thinking, and um, it goes along the lines that we have been trying to talk about in the district um, that came up several times last year about equity and um, getting our staff more culturally proficient, and we'll be working with uh, DEEP as well as the Harvard Rides program in addition to the Anti-Defamation League uh, that is working in two of our schools. So we are fully addressing this, I think, in order for us to become better educators of a diverse, multicultural urban district. This is something that all of us need to do, and I think that we're welcoming this with open arms and open minds. So we're excited about that. Um, the 28th was a professional development day that was uh, led by Dr. Chase and our principals, and um, we opened our doors the following day on August 29th to about the hottest opening day on record. Um, so we were uh, well prepared. Um, I know many of our neighboring districts had um, half days or cancellations. I think we're very fortunate here in Malden that all, of our, all seven of our school buildings are air conditioned. Um, we made sure that our air conditioning was working. Um, we sent out a message that our staff, you know, uh, under the direction, our medical staff, under the direction of, of Patty Tremendozzi, our nurses were vigilant and looking for signs of heat exhaustion or symptoms of dehydration. Uh, we wanted to make sure our kids were safe. We did eliminate outdoor recess on those two opening days because it was so hot. Um, so we, we were fully prepared for that. Much like when it gets very cold, I feel that our schools should be opened for our kids because when it's extremely cold and some of our districts have canceled for that, I know that our schools are warm and our kids can get two warm meals a day and be there till four o'clock. Uh, so much like when we had that extreme heat, our kids were inside in air conditioning. I felt that that was the best way to approach our safety. Uh, we also began the school year with a new transportation vendor. They did start over the summer. Um, NRT is our new transportation vendor. You've probably seen their buses around. They're labeled Malden Public Schools. Uh, we did have um, a couple bumps the first few days. Uh, that was expected. Um, we have been working very closely with NRT. I've had at least two face-to-face -face meetings with them since the first day of school. Uh, actually, today we had a meeting with the Malden CPAC and NRT where we um, took some feedback uh, answered some questions that they had. NRT was there for well over an hour, and I think that it went very well. Um, we are continuing to go in the right direction, and I feel that NRT is a, the vendor that will make a, a difference and keep our kids uh, transported as safely and efficiently as possible. And that concludes my report for tonight. All right, let's take a uh, few questions from the members. Anybody uh, have anything after the... Superintendent's report. Uh, Mr. McCarthy. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The only question that I have to the superintendent is about the Crisis Go app. Um, now, is that going to be given out to all of the teaching staff or yes. and administrators? Correct. Okay. Yeah, all, all staff will have access to it, and then it will be eventually available for students and, and parents. Correct, Mr. Dolan? Right. All staff have it now. Yeah, all staff have it now. Good. Right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, other questions? Uh, just a couple from the chair, superintendent. Um, before I forget, mm -hmm. I, I do want to thank uh, Mr. Dolan on behalf of the committee uh, for all his hard work and dedication. Um, on the Raptor system, any flaws thus far? We haven't. We have not had Overall, any at this point. Well. No, uh, we've actually ordered additional um, printers or bases okay. so that we can uh, expedite the process a little better. And that's in all of our buildings. In all of our school buildings. That's okay. correct. Yep. Um, on the cameras, will those have remote access to be viewed? Yeah. Yes, just like all of our cameras do. Yep. Um, so once the new cameras come online, there has to be a naming convention. Mr. Dolan works with Siemens um, to make sure that it is named correctly so that when we, those of us who access to view this uh, remotely, uh, it will be logical so that you're not kind of hopscotching around. Okay. They're, they're named, the naming convention is important. Okay. Uh, very impressed with the phone. So all of our classrooms now? Not all yet. Uh, they installed them first in the Salem, what I believe, and that was because over the summer we had a uh, power surge that knocked out our entire phone system at the Salem Wood. Okay. So those have come online. I think the BB school's up next. And so you just phase in? Yes. Yeah, and we'll so be I can direct connect um, Central, and I could also call 911. From those phones, correct. Yeah. And when you call 911, it'll, it'll allow for a hands-free operation as well. And parents can leave voicemails now if need be. Once our phones are all implemented, yeah, implemented. in all the schools, they will be able to. That's correct. Okay. Uh, on the fire drills, too premature to have had one by now. No, we've had a couple. Okay. Uh, not yet. Okay, I thought okay. I thought I had heard of one. Uh, maybe I was mistaken. I know that they were in one of the schools. And we're talking four, four minutes. Four a year. Four a year. Yeah. Okay. Plus, the principal will be doing additional drills throughout the year. Okay. Not necessarily fire drills. We're doing lockdown and evacuation drills, uh, but the fire department will be there to oversee four fire drills. We're also looking at down the road for them to be present when we do our lockdown and shelter in place uh, drills. Okay. Yep. Now you were telling the committee about updating the floor plans. So for example, would that be to capture how um, we um, split up a classroom at the ELC? Correct. Yeah. Okay. It'll have where new classrooms have been added, yeah. um, where we've done that. It'll also make sure that our numbers and naming conventions that are on the blueprints are the most accurate. Got it. Okay. Um, and what's the um, what's going on with the student representative elections being held? Is that why? Uh... There, the student uh, who was on this committee last year is uh, very dedicated to her senior year academics and felt that she didn't have the time to do this. So we're in the middle of electing a new representative from Malden High School to the school committee. Okay, so next month you're hoping to have a... Yeah, we should, uh, for the October 1st meeting, we should have a student in place. All right, well, she will be missed. Um, yes, she was terrific. I'd... And then on uh, the, just a couple of questions left on the um, Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. So would it be the plan to get to the other fifth grades at some point? Not at this point. Um, we were able to obtain those through the ELT grant right. as part of our um, extended learning uh, but at this point, there's not. Um, it gets into a fiscal um, issue of okay. purchasing them as well. Okay. Uh, and then final question, I just wanted to ask you back to where you began on the positions you announced. You know, you introduced the administrative team. I was just curious as a whole, um, are all of our positions filled for the most part? No, we have a couple unfilled positions right now. Okay. And that's not uncommon in a district? Um, no, we've point. had some situations uh, where we have some open positions. That's correct. Okay. And uh, the aim is to have them filled 
I as, assume as soon as possible. Quickly but. and uh, with the highest quality candidate that we can get. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, other questions of our superintendent? A lot going on. I think I counted four or five pages in his report. Yeah. Um, we had a lot. All right. So hearing none, uh, thank you, Superintendent. You're welcome. Thank you. Let's drop down to uh, subcommittee reports where I see we have one. Uh, and this is just an update on enrollment in space. And Mr. Iovino will speak to that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As of Friday, we have 6,639 students enrolled in the Malden Public Schools pre-K to grade 12. That represents a decrease of 100 um, since June of last year, but that number is going to steadily increase. Right. So thank okay. you very much. Any questions of Mr. Iovino? Okay, hearing none. Let's go to item number five. This is motions and resolutions. So there are two of them on the agenda. The first is the Little Free Library for the BB School. Uh, Mr. McCarthy and Ms. Spatafora will speak to that. And then after that, we'll get to a transfer for an employee's child for the 2018-2019 school year. And that will be led by Mr. Iovino. So let's first take up the Little Free Library. We'll go to Mr. McCarthy first. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so the BB School actually came to myself and Ms. Spatafora at the end of last school year, and they were asking if it was possible to get a little library for, for the property on the BB School. So obviously, like everyone knows, I, I work at a vocational technical high school, and I went to the carpentry department and asked them if that was a possibility. And they said to me that it was a possibility, just give me a, a stock list and everything that needs to be done for that. And um, like from the, uh, from the agenda, everyone saw the pictures that I sent out. That was the completion of the project. And um, I'd actually like to read the motion into, into, the, uh, into the minutes if, if, sure. that's, if that's a possibility. Please. Um, the motion is being brought in front of the school committee this evening by myself, Mr. McCarthy, and Ms. Spadafora to have a little free library placed on the BB School property, 401 Pleasant Street, Malden, Mass. The purpose is to promote another fun, creative, and innovative way to promote literacy. And that was the, the driver behind that. So um, I'm not sure if Ms. Spadafora has anything else that she'd like to add. I'll yield the rest of my time. Ms. Spadafora. Please excuse me, because I have a cold here. Um, just to reiterate, uh, Mr. McCarthy, the motion, just another added way to promote literacy, um, to really give kids another option outside of school. You know, it, it, there's a lot of kids that are out there in the playground playing and to see something that says, oh, you know, I've been, that book looks great. Or, um, you know, different circumstances, maybe, you know, you can't afford books. We're giving kids that opportunity to read. Um, and I think it's, it's a perfect location to, uh, to promote that, so. All right. Any questions <laughs> of the sponsors? So again, just for posterity, uh, Mr. McCarthy, you've made the motion seconded by Ms. Patafora, so it's properly in front of us. Um, just a question from the chair. I presume it's been endorsed by the uh, PTO, the school council, the school itself, okay. And um, remind me once again, the location you're thinking? Or will that be decided after? Uh, yeah, so that's probably gonna be decided after somewhere outside on the, on the property. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, somewhere okay. out there. And uh, endorsed by the superintendent? Yes, strongly endorse uh, this initiative. It promotes literacy. Um, I think it also is just good role modeling for us, for our young people and as a community, I think, to promote the literacy as well. Um, I think that they, uh, we just, when they install these, they need to be ADL compliant, or ADA compliant, rather. Um, and I think that we're working with public facilities on right. ensuring that. Okay. All right, if there's no other questions, uh, let's put it up for a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? The ayes have it. That carries unanimously. Uh, the next motion is a transfer for an employee's child for the 2018-2019 school year. Mr. Iovino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a request made by one of our employees. She's a team chairperson at the Forestdale School. Her name is Lisa Kane. And she's requesting permission from the school committee to transfer her daughter, who is in the first grade, 
from Saugus to the Malden Public Schools. The transfer request has come about because of a very, very difficult, almost impossible child um, care arrangements uh, that she has had in the past. Um, this is uh, something that we have done in the past for our employees. We take it up on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, and I'll refer to the superintendent on this, but I think that uh, Medford and Melrose have a similar uh, proposition okay. where they do this for their employees. Am I correct? That's my understanding. I know when I was in Somerville, we did uh, as well. Yeah. So I would make a recommendation that we uh, approve this transfer. Again, this is done on a case-by-case -case ba <clears throat> case -case basis. This is a not a blanket approval. So I would recommend to the committee that we approve this. All right, let's see if there's a second on that uh, motion. Seconded by Mr. Froyo. Now it's properly before us. Any questions on the motion? Let's go to Ms. Leon. So it says just for the 2018-19 school year, is this something that will need to be voted on every school year? I assume she's not going to want her child bounced back and forth. Well, I don't believe that she does either. I think that once this approval is approved, once this approval is made, the child will be here year after year in consecutive years. Does that answer your question, Ms. Mm -hmm. Leon? Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have a question? Everybody understand? Superintendent, you want to give us your opinion? Um, I think that this is something that has been a long um, agreement with the uh, employees, Malden Education Association, and uh, the school committee. I think that when these situations come up, it's uh, brought before the committee and they, they vote. Um, you know, usually if it happens towards the spring uh, when families are making arrangements, um, but uh, I think that this is uh, something that we have done. There's been past practice and precedent for this. So I'm, uh, I'm in favor of this. All right, there you have it. Last chance for questions. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? The ayes have it. That carries unanimously. Okay, now we're down to uh, personal privilege. This is an opportunity for our members to announce any events coming up. And so why don't we go uh, left to right. Uh, let's see, Mr. McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So just a few points of information coming out of the, um, the BB school. We had a successful fall fest um, last Friday night. All the kids had a great time and, and the parents did as well. Um, we also have a book fair coming up at the BB school. It's on September 24th um, to the 27th. It's gonna be in the library. Um, and then our first PTO meeting coming up at the BB school is also gonna be on October 2nd at 6 p.m. in the cafeteria. Um, that's all the information that I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Let's go over to Ms. Bordenaro. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a few things, but first I just want to welcome all the students back to a new school year. I hope it's a happy and healthy one. Uh, the first event that I want to announce is Malden Overcoming Addiction's fourth annual candlelight memorial vigil. It's October 7th from 6 to 8.30 at Malden High School. It's a free event. The vigil is to remember those who lost, um, who we lost to the disease of addiction, and we want to come together to reduce the stigma associated with addiction. Um, also, and lastly, the Malden High School Athletics Department, in connection with the Malden Rec Department, established inner city basketball leagues for each school, and the grades include seventh and eighth grade boys and sixth, seventh, and eighth grade girls. This is a free event to all Malden Public School students. The league will meet at the Salemwood School starting tomorrow, every Tuesday. The boys play at 4 o'clock, the girls play at 4.50. Registration is available online at maldenrack.com. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Froyo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Linden Steam Academy PTO is you're gonna have a back to school ice cream party from six to seven thirty on September twenty first. That's it, one thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Miss 
Beardsley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to welcome back students and staff and just say have a great year, uh, school year, and thanks for having my kids back in school. Um, and these announcements are the Forestdale School. Um, Monday, um, September 24th at 6 p.m., the Forestdale School Council meeting will be, ha will be had. Um, on, on September 25th, the pie and cookie fundraiser begins. And then on Friday, um, September 28th, family fun night, glow walkathon, and barbecue. And the info is on the Facebook PTO page if you want more information. Great. Okay, last call. Uh, let me just ask the superintendent before we depart. What is going on in Mr. Charlie Conifer's department? Is it me or is every team undefeated at Malden High School? Uh, well, <laughs> our football team is, has tried valiantly. They're, they're getting there. We're making progress. Um, but our soccer teams, our cross-country teams, golf, they've all been off to great starts. Field We're hockey. really excited about that. I think it's... Uh, Got a lot of excitement going, and I've gone to uh, one of our football games. We are looking a lot better than we did last year, and I think that uh, Coach Frecker has got the team going in the right direction. It's just a matter of time till we turn the corner with them. Go Malden. But yeah, we've got uh, a lot of Malden pride out there. All right, go Malden. Uh, Miss Beersley? One last one. Um, the North Shore Hispanic Association Festival to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month is this Saturday from 3 to 6 in the Malden High School courtyard. So come Great. if you can. <laughs> All right, let's entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Ivino, seconded by Ms. Bordenaro. All those in favor say aye. aye. Anybody opposed? The ayes have it. School committee is hereby adjourned. <laughs>